Welcome to tonight's hour of past service. We thank God for the month of April where we are looking at the subject of prayer. And tonight we want to begin the service on the note of thanksgiving. You know, the Bible says that we should enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. It's thanksgiving that gives us access to God. He said, in all things we should give thanks for this is the will of God concerning our lives. Hebrews 10. 1315 says that by him therefore let us offer a sacrifice of praise which is the fruit of our lips giving thanks continually so tonight we want to just lift up our hearts and our voices to thank god god has been very faithful that i mean you know if you hear the number of deaths that have gone on and you are alive at this time you have to have a reason to thank god that you survived the scare of this pestilence that god gave you the faith to overcome so tonight we want to just lift up our voices and say thank you to god in the name of the lord jesus why don't you just lift up your voice as you're following us just tune in and in, share with a friend let's thank god for his mercies let's thank god for his grace let the lord hear your voice of thanksgiving in jonah 2 9 the bible said jonah said i will magnify the lord with the voice of thanksgiving tonight let the lord hear your voice of thanksgiving oh mando lobo shatabaha father we are thankful unto you tonight in the name of the lord jesus we thank you lord for the gift of life the word says your thief cometh not but to steal to kill and to destroy but lord you have come that we might have life and have it more abundantly just lift up your voice and let's bless the name of the lord Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Let the Lord hear your voice. Let your thanksgiving ascend to heaven tonight. This tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh God, we bless you. We give you praise. We honor you for your faithfulness. Uh. What shall we render unto you, Lord, this evening? Uh, for the benefit of life. Uh, for the benefit of healing. Uh, for the benefit of your provision. Uh, for your benefit, oh God, of your preservation. Uh, we say thank you, Lord. Oh, Mark we bless your holy name we give you all the glory we honor you lord he said uh, hey oh bless the name of the lord give him praise uh, honor the lord with your offering of thanksgiving uh, honor the lord with your sacrifice of praise uh, the lord deserves our praise uh, the lord deserves our thanksgiving uh, in the name of the lord jesus uh, oh we are thanking God for our God is good. We are thanking God for without God, hey, what would we have been? That when this pestilence came and sought our lives, by God we were exempted. Our families were exempted. Our loved ones were exempted. Somebody bless the name of the Lord. The least you can do uh, is to say thank you to the Lord. Uh. The Bible said in Luke 17 uh, that Jesus healed 10 lepers. Uh, and one of the 10 uh, came back to Jesus, uh, fell down in Luke 17 verse 10. Uh, and Bible said, uh, he said with a loud voice, uh, thank you Jesus. Uh, and hear me, Jesus said, uh, were there not 10 of you? Uh, where are the other nine? Tonight I want you to be like the one leper who came back to Jesus, uh, even to say thank you. Thank you uh, let the lord hear your voice uh, your voice of thanksgiving uh, oh makolobo shadabaha yantadi bibo sheketa uh, our father we are saying thank you uh, he said our father who art in heaven uh, hallowed be thy name uh, let us hallow the name of the lord tonight let us hallow the name of the lord uh, let us give him praise uh, let us exalt his name uh, let us magnify the lord uh, with our thanksgiving uh, and declare that beside our god there is no god he will not give our glory to any man. He will not give our thanks to any man. He will give all the praise to our God who is worthy in the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you and we honor you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Receive all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Say a believing amen to the prayer. One who finish. Or say our last prayer for this evening before we enter into the next session. We are praying in this month of praying or excelling in prayer. You want to pray that you will not faint in prayer. 
Jesus speaking in Luke chapter 18 verse 1. He said that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Beloved, in these times of turbulence and pestilence, if we are not careful, you may faint in prayer. But you want to say to God, Lord, grant me the grace to be fervent in prayer. Grant me the grace that I shall not faint in prayer. He said that we should pray and not to faint. When you look at uh, Ephesians 6 verse 18, he said, Praying always, praying always with all kinds of prayer and supplication in the spirit. Colossians 4 2 says that continue in prayer and watch in the same with thanksgiving. So tonight, you want to lift up prayer and say, Father, grant me the grace to continue in prayer. May I never faint in prayer. Finally, in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 17, he said, Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. We want to lift up prayer unto God. Father, the grace to continue in prayer. The grace to pray without ceasing. The grace to pray and not to faint. May that grace come upon me. Lift up your voice and let's pray. Father, grant me the grace to pray without ceasing. Grant me the grace to continue in prayer. Grant me the grace to pray and not to faint. Uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, Kadabo Shabaha. Liman Terelebo Shabeha. I receive grace to pray without fainting. I receive grace to pray without ceasing. I receive grace to continue in prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus. If there is a man to pray, there is a God to answer. He said, If my people who are called by my name who humble themselves and pray, I shall hear from heaven. Beloved, lift up your voice. I need grace uh, to continue in prayer. I receive grace, Lord, to pray and not to faint. Uh. I receive grace uh, to pray without ceasing. Eh, makabo shana baha, yantelelebo shadebe kapaya, yantape sekelelebo shaha, intelelebo shapaya, yapandelelebo kateha, li pandelelebo shapaya, ikadebo shadeha, li manterebe kapaya, li kololobo shataya. In the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, my Kabo shede bihaya, yanta pandele lebo shapaya, yante bo shebele lebeka, yanta na na be, liko bo shana ma beha, yanto bo shana ma be, ya sante le lebo kaba. Grace to continue in prayer, grace to pray and not to faint. Grace, ah, uh, eh, to be quickened in the spirit. Ya sante le lebo ka, fervent in spirit, ah, serving in prayer. In the name of Jesus, ah, my kabo shebele lebeka. Oh God, ah, la sante. I humble myself before you. Release the grace, the grace for unceasing prayer, the fire of prayer. Let it fall upon me. They said in the word that they were in one accord and in prayer, and the spirit fell upon them like cloven tongues of fire. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost that quickens a man to pray and not to faint, that stirs a man to pray and not to quit. Let that spirit come upon me. In the name of Jesus, oh Kabo Shadabaha, you have just one more minute. As somebody lift up your voice and say, Oh God, I need a spirit of prayer. Let it come afresh. Let it come upon me. In the name of Jesus, I repent of my prayerlessness, Lord. Lord, save me from quitting in prayer. Save me, Lord, from fainting in prayer. In the name of Jesus, may I be stronger in the spirit. Spirit, uh, praying always. Uh, may I be strong in the spirit. Uh, praying uh, without ceasing. Uh, may I be strong in the spirit. Uh, praying uh, without fainting. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, my Kabo Shabaha. Yanta Pandele Lebosha. Hey, my Santa Baha. Ya Santa Baha. Ya Sapandele Bika. The spirit of Elijah. Let it come upon me. Uh, he said Elijah was a man with like passions. Uh, and yet he prayed. And the rain stopped. Uh, and he prayed again. And the rain came out. Let the spirit out. Come upon me. Yatabo Shabaha. Bless the name of the Lord. Give him praise in the name of Jesus. In this season of praying excellently, I receive grace to pray and not to faint. I receive grace to pray and not to quit. I receive grace to pray, oh Jesus, without ceasing. And I receive grace to continue in prayer. Father, may my prayer avail much for your glory. May you answer us. In this evening, 
in Jesus mighty name we bless you father and we thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus name bless you somebody let's continue with worship Amen. we bless your name Jesus we give you glory Jesus somebody why don't you lift up your voice in this new season and glorify the name of the Lord Kaziza de de karasa yazen de 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 ba razazin de de kazan de de araba ya ba iko sa yan de de araba dosi bi andaraba the bible says that there's nothing impossible for our god to do if you believe it just say yes lord yes lord there's nothing impossible for our god to do What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Not like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you None like you What are you turning to wine? What are you turning to wine? Open the eyes, Open the the eyes of the blind There's no one like you None like you None like Thank you, you. Into the darkness you shine there's no one like you. There's none like you. None like Come you. Come on, say it. Our God is greater. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than me. Our God is healer. Awesome and power.
you than any other, any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God. We bless your name tonight, yes, Lord. Lord Jesus. For who can be compared unto you? Yes, Lord. Me di ma wo ho, me di ma wo. If I don't see, na me di ma wo. Me di ma ye di ma wo ho, me di ma wo. Ata muti na midi ma wo midi ma wo midi ma wo ata muti na midi ma. So we give it on to you, O oh God. We give you a worthy praise, Adi Kazaza and Dedeba. We give you a worthy praise, Adi Kazaza and Dedeba. We give you a worthy praise, Adi Akaba. Worthy of worship, Adi Akaba. that is not broken our situation will not describe our praise and our worship God
Broken praise on broken praise. forever. All my praise be yours. Opportunity to come into his presence in different locations from all over the world to hear the word of God. Tonight, I just want you to close your eyes with me wherever you may be in your home, in your office, in your vehicle, wherever you may be. Just close your eyes with me for a prayer. Father, we thank you for tonight. 
our hearts are filled with gratitude and thankfulness to you. Let our unceasing praise continue to rise before your throne of grace. And tonight we pray, dear Father, that you will speak to us your word. Grant us the entrance of your word into our hearts. Quicken our understanding. Cause your word to accomplish in our lives. Every single purpose for which sake you sending your word unto us tonight. In the end, O oh God, may your holy name alone be glorified. May your holy name alone be praised. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This month, brethren, we are focusing on a theme, praying excellently. Tonight, I'm going to touch on a few things. On this theme, praying excellently. And I want us to begin the service by reading Matthew chapter 5, chapter 6, verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Jesus is saying to us, when we pray, we should not pray as hypocrites. How do hypocrites pray? Hypocrites pray going through all kinds of motions and actions just so they can please men or please society. Talking to God the Father is not their sole aim. It's not their primary objective. But to be seen of men to be applauded of men, to be appreciated of men, to be recognized by men as doing that which society claims is the way to go. He urges us not to pray as hypocrites. If we are going to pray excellently and receive excellent results, let us desist from being hypocrites in our prayer closets. And when we stand to pray in his presence. Mark chapter 11, verse 24. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Jesus said, whatsoever things we desire, when we pray, there is one important thing we must do. And that is to believe. When we pray, no matter what we do in our praying, if we do not believe, we would not receive the things that we are asking of the Father. If we pray for 24 hours, non-stop, with fasting, even dry fasting, and yet do not believe, child of God, you would not receive anything from the Father. If we pray the loudest, such that we could be heard a mile away with groanings and with tears and rollings on the ground, and yet do not believe, child of God, you will not receive the petitions that you are asking of the Father. He said, if ye pray, when ye pray, should you pray, believe, believe, believe. James chapter 4 verse 3. Ye ask and receive not, because you ask amiss, that ye may consume it upon your last. This is another area where many Christians are failing. Many Christians are asking God for things. And we are asking God for things because of our own selfish or ill motives. Because we want to consume the results upon our selfish lust, our own egocentric desires and attitudes. He said, many are asking, many are praying, and they are praying amiss because the reason and the objective and the purpose for their prayer is to satisfy their own lust. What is lust? Lust is simply strong, excessive desire. 
and it can be anything. It can go the negative way, and it can go the positive way. But if the reason for our asking and praying to receive something from God is to consume upon our own last, we shall receive no, re no results. A believer came to, Paul, to Peter and the disciples and said to them, Give me, receive this money from my hands and give me the ability such that when I lay hands on people, they would also receive the Holy Ghost. And Peter said to him, Your silver perish with you because you thought you could buy the gift of God with money. Many of us are asking God for things just so we can prove to the world that yes, we are this or we are that. Yes, see how the Lord has blessed me. See how the Lord has prospered me. Yes, God has done this for me. If that is the motive, if that is the rationale, then we are praying amiss. And we will need to check our attitude and our motives. First John chapter 5, reading from verse 14 to verse 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Child of God, you want to stand on the grounds of prayer where everything that you are asking God, you know beyond every shadow of doubt that he is hearing you and he will grant the petitions that you are asking of him. You can do that if you stand on one ground. And it is this. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him. Let's read the verse 14 again. It says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So it implies that if we are asking him something that is not according to his will, he's definitely not hearing us. Physically, naturally, he's hearing our voice, but he's not hearing us to answer us. I received a message about two weeks ago where someone sent a prayer. And in that prayer, the person was saying that God should answer by tender and by fire and that he should curse. He was cursing the children of all the something. And I'm like, how can you be cursing the children of someone who has offended you? What have those children done to you? Certainly, this is not a prayer that God would answer. Because this is not according to his will. Amen. God would not hear us actively and respond to our prayer when we are asking him for things that are not consistent or aligned with his will for us. We can roll on the ground. We can scream the loudest. We can cut ourselves. We can fast a thousand years. We can pray nonstop for one million years. God will not answer us. If we are not asking him according to his will. If we know we are asking him according to his will. We have the confidence and the assurance that he would hear us and he will respond to our request. Amen. Let's read John chapter 8 from verse 28 to verse 31. Then said Jesus unto them, when you have lifted up the son of man, then shall you know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself, but as my father has taught me, I speak these things. And he that sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone, for I do always, for I do always the things that please him. Amen. And he spake these words, many believed on him. Amen. He said, I do always the things that please the Father. And for this reason, I know beyond every shadow of doubt that he is with me. He that has sent me is with me. Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. The Father sent him, and he came not to do his own will, not to do his own thing, but to do the will of the Father that sent him and to finish his work. If he has called us and he, if he is sending us as believers into the kingdom, as believers into the world, as believers into the camp of the enemy, there is just one thing that we can do. 
That is to do the will of the Father. And beyond every shadow of doubt, we would know that he is with us, even the one who has sent us. He would never leave us, nor forsake us. Verse 31. Verse, 30, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. This is the second thing that he was talking to them about. That puts them in a place where they can stand as believers and know that they will have answers to their prayers. He said, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. In whose word are you continuing? Are you continuing in the word of a man? Are you continuing in the words of media, social media? Are you continuing in the words of a celebrity? Are you continuing in the words of a forecaster? Are you continuing in the word of a so-called prophet? Are you continuing in the word of a deceiver? He said, if you continue in the word of the Lord, then would you be his disciple indeed. And it is then and only then that you would know the truth. And the truth that you would know shall make you free. Amen. The truth does not set us free passively. The truth sets us free actively. What do I mean by this? It is the truth that you would know that would set you free forever and ever. Amen. Many years ago, when I got born again, the devil came into my room that night. And he said to me, tonight, if you close your eyes, you will die. I just started going through the scriptures with my eyes wide open. And I just kept on reading the scriptures from Genesis. I was flipping through the scriptures, just devouring the scriptures. And he kept on whispering to me and he said, you will die tonight if you close your eyes. And as I kept on flipping through the scriptures, I finally came to Timothy, where I read, for he has not given unto us the spirit of fear, but he has given unto us the spirit of sound mind, love and power. I screamed when I read this scripture, devil, you are a liar. And literally, I felt a spirit run out of my room. And from that day, I have never been afraid. From that day, I have been set free from the spirit of fear, from the spirit of fear of man, from the spirit of fear of the devil and his cohorts, because I have come to a place of the knowledge of the truth. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth that you shall know would set you free. Let's read 1 John chapter 3, verse 22. And whose, when whatsoever ye we ask, we receive of him, because we keep his commandments, and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Child of God, you want to receive all your prayers answered by God. Keep his commandments and do only those things that are pleasing in his sight. Not the things that are pleasing to yourself. Not the things that are pleasing to your friends. Not the things that are pleasing to society. But the things that are pleasing to God and God alone. Amen. I want to touch on the third thing for tonight. Let's turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 11, verse 25. And when ye stand praying, forgive. And if you have ought against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. There is one area where many Christians, many believers are failing. Many Christians are coming to the place of prayer. Many Christians are coming to the altar of prayer. And yet we are harboring in our hearts a lot of unforgiveness. As a result, we go through the motions of fasting and prayer. We go through the non-stop prayer chains. We go through the groaning and agonizing prayer moments. And we, we do not see any results. Why? Because we are harboring forgive, unforgiveness in our hearts and in our lives. He said, when you stand praying, forgive. And if you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you. Luke chapter 6, verse 37 to verse 38. It says, judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. This is very simple. If we do not forgive, we shall not be forgiven. Give, and it shall be given unto you. 
Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. This is the verse that many of us have measured on. The verse 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. But I like us to always link the verse 37 to the verse 38 which says that we should forgive. We should forgive so that we can be forgiven. Then when we come to the place of sowing in terms of giving, we can receive the good measure that is pressed down and shaken together, running over with men, giving that into our bosom. Let's forgive. Let's come to a place where our lives are led continually forgiving the people who offend us. Let's be characterized and labeled as the child of God, the believer who is always forgiving the many who offend him. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 3, reading from verse 7 to verse 11. It says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, referring to the wives, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being hers together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing, but contrawise blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. There are today many couples, many husbands and wives, who are living together in the same house, in the same home, and yet there is such unforgiveness in their hearts. There is such resentment by a wife towards the husband. There is such resentment and hatred and bitterness in the heart of a husband towards a wife. And yet we come to a place of devotion in the mornings. We come to a place of devotion in the evenings. We come to a place of interceding and praying and believing God for things. He said, let's learn to forgive so that our prayers will not be hindered. Let's be pitiful towards one another. Let's be courteous. And let's be kind. Let's be forgiving of one another so that when we come to the prayer, to the prayer closet, our prayers can flow unto God unhindered. Child of God, I urge you to practice the Christian living of forgiving one another, particularly if you are a husband and wife. Let not the sun go down on your anger. Let not the sun, of, or the sun go down on your anger. Forgive one another and learn to live a life of forgiveness. Verse 10. For he that will love life and see good days, let him reframe his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no, no guile. Verse 11. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensure it. Child of God, if you would love life and you want to see many days, he says, seek peace and ensue it. Do good. Seek peace and ensue it. You cannot tell me that you are living a life of unforgiveness and yet seeking peace. Those who seek peace walk the path of forgiveness. Those who do good, they walk the path of forgiveness. If you want to live long, if you want to love the life that you would live, living long, if you want to see good days, do good. Seek peace, forgive, and ensue it, and you will see the blessings of God in your life abounding as never before. Amen. Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 9 to verse 12. It says, Lie not one to another, saying that you have put off the old man with his deeds. I believe unforgiveness is part of the lifestyle of the old man. But now, we are being challenged and called to a new life, which in Christ Jesus is a new creation. That we put off the old man with his deeds. Amen. And now, he urges us to put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Christ has created us. The Bible says in Corinthians that we are a new creation created in Christ. In Ephesians, it says that we are the workmanship of God created unto good works, 
which God has foreordained that we should walk in them. Amen. And this is applicable to everyone. There is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free. Amen. And we have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. There must be a renewal of our knowledge. There must be a renewal of our understanding. And this renewal of our knowledge and our understanding has to conform with the knowledge and the understanding of Christ Jesus, who is our standard, who is our only standard. We have no two standards in this world as children of God, but one standard, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Shall we read from Colossians chapter 3, verse 11? To verse 12. I think we've read that already. Verse 12. Let's see verse 12. It says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Verse 13 to verse 16. Forbearing one another, forgiving one another. And if any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Child of God, have you been forgiven by Christ? If Christ has forgiven you, then he urges you to forgive your brother. He urges you to forgive your sister. And above all these things in verse 14, he says, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Charity, love forgives. Love is the bond of perfectness. Verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Verse 16. Let the word of God dwell richly. In all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another. In psalms and hymns. And spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of God dwell richly in you. When the word of God dwells richly in you. The word of God will be speaking to your heart. Urging you to forgive. Urging you to choose the path of forgiveness. And thereby, you would find yourself on the grounds where you can be praying excellently. Amen. Matthew chapter, 8, verse 1, Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 to verse 4. At the same time, at that same time, came the disciples unto Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him and set him in the midst of them. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto us. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 18 from verse 1 to verse 4, was demonstrating to them what the kingdom of God looked like. He placed a little child in the midst of them and he said, Except ye be converted and become as a little child, you shall not enter into the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. He says, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. When God showed me this scripture, he asked me a question. Have you seen two little kids playing before? I said, yes. In a second, they are angry with each other. But in the next second, they've forgiven each other and they are playing together as though nothing happened. He said, except we be like two children, we shall not be able to enter into the kingdom of God. When Christ called that little child and called him over and placed him in the midst of the people, that little child did not receive Jesus Christ. He yielded strictly to Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ placed him in the middle. He had no arguments with Christ. He didn't have any logic for Christ. Why are you putting me in the middle? Why are you making me stand here? Why didn't you tell me? He had no arguments. He just yielded wholly, trustingly. And Christ placed him in there. Except we come to him as believers and act like little children in every area of our lives, we would not be able to stand on the grounds of victorious Christian living in prayer. Verse 21. Then came Peter, with that little child standing in the midst with Christ there. Peter came and said to the Lord, How often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? 
Verse 35. Jesus had said to him that 70 times 7. Verse 35 says, So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if you from your hearts forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. With that little child in the middle, Jesus asked, Peter asked Jesus, How often should I forgive? Jesus said, 70 times 7. That's a lot. But the reason I want us to read verse 35 is because he said, If we do not forgive from our hearts, our brother and our sister's trespass, the Heavenly Father will not be able to forgive us. Amen. Many of us say with our lips to our brother, I have forgiven you. And yet we harbor in our hearts the bitterness, the resentment, the pain, and the anger. And that brother walks away from us thinking that he's been forgiven. But we know in our hearts that we have not forgiven him. We are still holding it against him. And then the next time something happens, we say, do you remember? Because we have not forgiven him. Can we come to a place of forgiving our brother and our sister from our hearts. We will be able to stand on the grounds to pray excellently and receive the answers to our prayers. Psalm 51, reading from verse 1 to 6. This is David writing this psalm after his trouble with Bathsheba and the encounter with the prophet Nathan. David said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy love and kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only, have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightst be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaping in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom. God is desiring truth in our, in our, in our inward parts. He's not desiring truth in our actions and in our deeds. The truth has to originate from our hearts. The hidden man of the heart. If the truth is there that we are forgiving our brother sincerely, or if the truth is there that we are acknowledging our error, our sin, and therefore we are calling upon God to forgive us, and if the truth is there in our hearts that we are sincerely forgiving our brother, even if our actions do not show that, that we really mean the forgiveness because it is the truth in our heart, and God sees it, that in our heart we have forgiven and we are letting it go. God will respond to our prayer when we stand on the grounds of prayer. Verse 16, be, verse 16, For thou desirest not sacrifice, as I would give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offerings. There is no one who can give sacrifices to God more than David. So he said, if it were sacrifices, he could give God so much of it. But he knew that God was looking for something beyond physical and natural sacrifices. He said in the verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contract height. O oh God, thou will not despise. Child of God, if you would come to God with a broken spirit, with a contract heart that is acknowledging your error and your sin and asking for forgiveness, God would hear you. God would forgive you. And you can also step onto a new page where you forgive your brother sincerely from your heart. You forgive your sister sincerely from your heart. And your prayers would ascend unto God unhindered. When David has done all of this, he came to a place where he began to cry out to God in a prayer which today many have been singing. From verse 10 to verse 12. He said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. 
Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with thy free spirit. Create in me a clean heart, O oh, oh, Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me wherever you are in your house wherever you are in your office you can make this your prayer let it be that from tonight you are calling upon jehovah god to create in you a clean heart a right spirit within you a heart that would go all the way to sincerely and genuinely forgive that brother that sister that friend that has offended you a heart that is renewed in knowledge. A heart that is filled with the love of God. That you can come to a place of prayer. Where you know that every prayer that you are offering unto the Father. Is according to the will of the Father. Because you are standing with clean hands in His holy presence. Because you are standing in His presence. With a clean heart. And you know your prayers are ascending unto him on him day. He will hear you because from a clean heart you are praying to him. He will hear you because with a clean spirit you are crying out to him. He will hear you and you will speedily respond to your prayer. Granting you all your petitions and all your desires. Child of God, God is calling you to a new standard of praying. Praying excellently. Jesus mighty name. If you have been worshipping with us tonight and Jesus Christ is not the Lord and Savior of your life. He is at hand to hear you tonight. Even as you call upon him to save you. He would forgive your sins. He would cleanse you. And he would make you a child of God. Pray tonight and ask God to forgive you your sins. Ask him to write your name in the Lamb's book of life. And from today, make him the Lord of your life. And you will never, ever be the same again. He will plant in your heart a spirit and a heart that forgives. A spirit and a heart that forgives. A spirit and a heart that forgives. So you can practically walk in this life forgiving those who offend you. So you can live a victorious Christian life going forward from today. In the name of Jesus. God richly bless you for being a part of this worship service tonight. At this hour, I would like to encourage as many of you who have been following this service with us on the internet. That we continue to reach out to souls, especially in the rural parts of this country. And we need your support to be able to do this. So we encourage you. So into this ministry, not only your offerings, but also special donations to support this great work of ministry, of bringing in the harvest of souls in this last days. Child of God, I also want to remind you that your tithes are the Lord's. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse of God and see if the Lord will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing because you obey his word to bring in his tithes which belongs to him and to bring in the offerings which he lays on your heart to freely sow into this ministry for the work of ministry god richly bless you for heeding the prompting of the spirit of god to sow into this ministry and to also walk in obedience to the word of god amen we want to also remind you of our Sunday service, our Friday service that comes off this coming Friday and on of our Sunday service that also comes off coming Sunday starting at 8 a.m. God richly bless you. We pray you make time to be with us during our hour of prayer on Friday in our wonderful Sunday service in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Shall we close our eyes in prayer? Our Father and our God, we thank you for speaking to us tonight we pray that your word would continue to work in us until we become absolute doers of your word and not just hearers 
we pray even as your word cleanses us and washes us that we would remain clean we will remain washed by the word and we would walk in the light of your word doing your will pleasing only you and not ourselves nor the world nor any other entity in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless and keep us all in the way of truth may the lord bless and protect us in the way of truth may the lord keep us in the paths of righteousness and may he continue to order our steps in the light of his word so we can walk victoriously praying excellently in jesus mighty name amen Thank you.